Das ist Bube und das ist Scholem. Genau, Professor Scholem. So, this is Bergmann? This is Bergmann. And this is Buber. And that is the Adler who told to Peter um, that was the Madrich at that time. He became, uh, later on, he was a very famous man. He wrote books and um, some 17 books about about the reasons that he bought. He was the best historian, a sociologue. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and these are the Birkenau boys. There is Bella Steiner here. I wonder if he's here. Yes, here is he. Do you recognize him? Yes. <laughs> and I'm in the blue. Unfortunately, a lot of them are don't live anymore. How do you call them? Birkenau boys, but the, uh, that really Bella can tell you about them. There is even a book, he has it at home, in English, the whole story about each one. But you have to tell me now about, about the Birkenau boy. boys. What would you, what, that you can summarize it, but you want still to squeeze me out? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what whatever you like about the Birkenau bo boys. Uh, the Birkenau boys is only the mystery how we are still alive. Because, you know, children were not there and we were only in Auschwitz in the familien camp. I don't know if you know the history because um, you know something about the history about Auschwitz? Yes. Well, and there was only one camp. There were children and um, babies and um, old people without selection. Everyone went into the camp and I told it to you before because they wanted to bluff the International Red Cross. But in the minute the bluff in Theresienstadt was so complete they didn't ask anymore a visit the Red Cross. They fell in the trap and they didn't ask. So they were sent to the gas, gas chambers. But in the end, it was 44, um, they changed the policy. They needed, the Wehrmacht needed people for work which means they wouldn't save them, but they could live another few months till they were kaput, and then they would die. But for the few months, they would let them walk in a, um, on the railway, on the bomb, or on the factories for ammunition and so on. So now what happened? They sent few women without children who were, let's say, between uh, 18 and uh, to work. The same with men. In the camp, well, in this unit, familien lager, you know, uh, fam family camp, were left old people, mothers with little children till uh, 16 or 17, 18 who didn't could go to work, and um, that's it, and the babies and so on, and old people. We were, we were at that time about 14 years, we were also left. And we knew that's the end, and old people who could go to work left the camp, and really from these people some survived after the war. Now in the last minute there was a selection, and they took out about 89 people, uh, boys, between 14 and 16 years, and put them in a Nazo camp. And these are the Birkenau boys. About, and from this today live about 20 from this group. And uh, these are the called 
Birkenau boys and why it's a mystery we don't know till today or as an exchange you know for um, uh, soldiers German soldiers who were kept in or as learning means that it should be in some factories to work or there was a policy of um, Himmler, I don't know if you know about it, he wanted to make separate peace with American and England against Russia. And then they told them, look, in America Jews are, uh, have the force and they have to say something. If you don't have Jews, so you can't speak with America. You have to show that there are still some Jews. So leave this, uh, ch some children and some p Jewish prisoners. Otherwise you can't make this kind of policy, separate peace with Germany against. So we don't know why. But anyhow, they took out a group of these children and it's a whole story what happened to them and what we have done. In the beginning we had even hair, which was like better mentioned, <laughs> better treatment and so on, and different jobs. And anyhow, uh, later on we got its kind of jobs and we were in a quarantine and we were separated from other people, which is also why. Nobody knows why. But we were neighbors of the Sonderkommando. Sonderkommando means the people who were working with the dead in gas chambers and so on. And therefore, we could smuggle in into Sonderkommando and we got a little food from them and clothing. It was very dangerous, but children don't care. And they told me, as I told you the stories, and when we have been with our job, our job was um, a carriage, a wagon, a wagon, instead of horses, there were 20 boys who were schlepping these things. All kinds of jobs. But a normal prisoner went to a job and was happy if he come at night or in the after the work in the camp. We could go to all the camps, even in women camps to Auschwitz one, and Auschwitz had many branches. And I was a very curious child, so I know exactly all these camps and the women camps and so on. So I, I knew what's going on. And we went also to the crematoria, not when there were people in, but when there were not people, they said, oh, take the wood. They were wood for burning people sometimes and we took this wood to the camps for normal heating <laughs> as if or for a building for the SS, the bunkers they were starting to bombard around. So if we went to the crematorium if there were not people coming or otherwise not uh, and when we finished the job, and it was cold, and the capo was in good mood, he said, children, it's cold, you finished your job, you can warm yourself in the gas chambers, which were under the earth, there is a little warmer. So everyone was afraid, but I wasn't so afraid that I wanted to see. So my neighbors, they know me well, and I would say, like, you know, I show you the museum, I know the museum system, this is this, this is this, and I saw everything and ask oh, what is this instrument, uh, where, where is, oh, what is the lift, so I knew everything exactly what is, therefore I had so much information, it's only by the way. Sometimes we went to the crematorium, we took the ashes, and when it was frozen, the waste, we put the ashes on this, all kinds of jobs. Sometimes we took uh, from the new transports, um, all the, they had to leave everything on the railways when they arrived. And they said, boys, take only 
um, close or only bread or only this. So we put it from one place to another and so on and so forth. By the way, Beja has a book about Birkenau boys and there everyone tells his life story. He should, in English, he should give it to you. So that's the story.